All right, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for this um, exciting, always exciting. Every time I see Rob present, I learn something new. Um, for those of you that are wondering if, if the handouts are available, they um, Rob typically tweaks the 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 <laughs> tweaks the handouts right up until the last minute, so we're never really able to get the um, the handouts for you as downloads while you're watching the webinar. But we are going to send out the slides as a PDF and the recording tomorrow, so you'll have everything. And then I want to reassure you that. Um, all the training that you're going to see today is available in greater depth on the Grove. And we'll talk about the Grove as we go along. But right now we've got a jam packed attend, um, agenda and I wanna turn it over to Rob. Rob, over to you. Okay, well, hello everybody. And um, I'm really excited to be um, uh, kind of showing you something today that I think if you jump into could possibly change your life. Um, it, it truly is kind of crazy. So open your mind and let's kind of jump into it. Just a little bit about me. My name is Rob Smith. Um, I've owned a couple different CPA firms. And in the very beginning, I was very reliant on people. Um, but then as I wanted to scale, I realized it was very difficult to scale and receive con and, and achieve consistency um, because I couldn't train everybody and I couldn't review everybody. Um, and then when I started to document what was in my head into and embed that into my work papers, that's when we really took off. Um, so the uh, so really the goal um, that I want you guys to take today is no matter what tool you use, whether it's this tool or another tool, if you can pull out what's in your head and put it and embed it into your workflow and your work papers, you can achieve greatness. Okay. So today I'm sitting here and I'm going to basically make a promise to the audience. Wait a minute. Wait. 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 wait I'm wait. This is not. This is not a late night television show. I'm sorry, this is a Zoom meeting webinar, so let's kind of back it up a little bit. And here's basically what I'm promising you. The OneNote bookkeeping system is, it's going to be easier to review because everything you need to see is on one page. It's not in three different documents buried somewhere. It's all on one page. It's going to be easier to delegate. And I'm going to prove that to you. And it's going to save you time. Okay. It's less expensive. It's more customizable. It's agnostic to any software. And it comes in two flavors. It comes in Microsoft 365, which is OneNote, but you can also do this in Google Docs. You've got it, and I've got an entire course on how to do this in Google Docs too. And here's the thing. This looks very complicated, but I'm using basic technology that you already know how to do. If you know how to do a screen clipping, if you know how to go cut, copy, and paste, that's, and if you can do some basic tables, that's all I'm doing to create these things. Okay. Yeah, I wanna, I wanna just chime in here, everybody. What's going to, what you're going to see is going to look very complicated, but I absolutely promise you that it is a magic trick and it, it literally is a magic trick, isn't it? It is t a table. It's just tables and hyperlinks and screen clips. That's it. That really is. It's awkward. so simple. And then Rob's process for moving things through. So I don't want anybody to feel like this is out of the reach of anything that you can do. You Sorry, get, I just had to be reassuring no. here because people get freaked out. They look at this and they go, oh my God, oh, oh, oh how could I do this? Well, and guess what? You can. And people can get this up and running in a day. Seriously, you can get this up and running in this technique in a day with software you're already using. Okay, so this is absolutely crazy. But wait, hold on a second. There's more. Okay, I took the same process and I use these same skill sets to go and document an entire client of mine. I had a client that burned through bookkeepers. It was unbelievably hard um, accounting. I mean, it's stuff that I had to look up. Um, he had some crazy, crazy stuff going on, but I was able to onboard a brand new accountant who was six months out of college in less than a week. And he pretty much had everything. And all I did was sit him down, show him how to basically do this. And he was able to follow along. So not only can you use this for internal, but if you do client consulting, this is going to be a brand new revenue source because it's amazing. So let's actually kind of jump in. Oh, and back, by the way, there's a 100% money back guarantee. So if you don't like it, we'll double your money back for this webinar. Okay. okay. <laughs> the webinar was free. <laughs> oh, <anyway>. Allison, don't. <laughs> You're getting two, two times zero. <laughs> yeah, so don't, so don't tell them the secret. Yeah, so that's. <laughs> Okay, but anyway, so here's here's my story. Okay, I had two really strong, outstanding employees. Okay, we'll call them Janet and Chrissy. 
I could basically just give them the client work and the work was done. It was amazing. We grew really quick. If you've never read the book, Predictable Success, that's kind of where our firm was in. We were in the fun stage. I, I was getting clients left and right. I just went in there and said, Janet, take this client. Chrissy, take this client. It was great until we filled their plate. Once I filled their plate, then we tried to, oops, I'm sorry. Then we went in and we tried onboarding new staff. We could not find experienced bookkeepers. So we had to hire somebody now. Okay. They were actually a student of mine in my um, college class that I was teaching. So I knew she was smart. I knew she knew debits and credits. Okay. She was my top student in my class. But when she came in, she got extremely frustrated and extremely like lost because she would go in and talk to one person and they'd say, do it this way, which was correct. And then she'd go talk to the other person and then say, do it that way. So it completely destroyed this new person because she could not handle all these different ways because she was sitting there trying to learn new software, our new ecosystem where everything was and the client nuances. On top of that, they had to learn, she had to learn it two different ways. We got to do it for this way for this person. You got to do it way for that person. It, it was really, really tough. And I could never get the two people to then sit there and switch. So then I kind of left the firm and, you know, basically went on and then did it my own way. Okay. Where everybody's doing it the same way. Okay. So that is kind of what happened to me. Okay. But there's two problems that's kind of causing these issues. Okay. So the first problem is bookkeepers are hard to find. The second problem that you're going to face is that life gets messy. Okay. Documents are everywhere. Communications are buried in 13 different places. And you're unsure if everything that you need to deal with is in one place. So think about a bookkeeping job. How do you, how do you or your staff know that you have every ingredient that you need to get the job done? Without looking in 13 or 14 different places, you don't know. Okay, so there's this mise en place. I don't know if that's pronounced, I pronounced that right or not, but it's basically a French term that says, put everything in place and gather all your stuff. So could you imagine going in there and having everything laid out in one place and exactly what you need, no more, no less? That's what you're going to be able to accomplish with this technique, okay? And you'd be confident that you're not missing everything because you only have to look in one place. It's all right there. Everything that you need is in one place. Okay. And the term that I like to kind of think about this is this idea of getting things done. It's a great book. Basically, the whole book boils down to me, to me, one thing. Everything that you need to get the job done goes in one place. As soon as you see it, you take it and put it in that place. You see it, you take it, you put it in that place. Somebody else puts it in that place. So that way you only have one place to go to look to see everything that you need for that particular topic whether it's a month end, a tax return, whatever, okay? And it doesn't matter who it comes from, whether it comes from the client or it comes from an internal source. So the first thing you're going to want to do, okay, you can continue with the status quo and, and basically kind of have a mess on your hands and, and complete and utter chaos. Or you can do the getting things done, okay? So this is really the first step that you need to do to implement this entire process because this is kind of the first domino of everything else, okay? So you need to decide where is your getting things done location? It has to have all required documents. It has to have only relevant communications and it needs a listing of all outstanding one-off tasks. You know what you need to do, but what about all the one-off tasks to get the job done for that month? Okay, well, in today's example, I'm just gonna be using Lysio. The files tab is gonna hold the documents. I'm gonna archive the documents out of here. I'm gonna archive it. I'm gonna, all my tasks are gonna be in one place and all my messages or emails are gonna be in, in these two tabs right here, and anything that's super relevant, I'm gonna actually move that relevant information over to the files tab, because then that way, everything that I need to get the job done will be sitting in the files tab. So that's gonna be the process that we're gonna be using today for my getting things done. But for you, you need to figure out what is your getting things done location and stick to it, okay? So now let's actually talk about, a um, instead of me, just me kind of just talking about this and saying it works, um, I actually want to talk um, about a, a case study. Here's somebody that implemented this series, um, completely one book, no, you know, this, this entire series and system. They had two really good employees that they basically took all the way through college. It was their, you know, it was her daughter and, and, and one of her friends trained them for four years. They finally got really good and then they graduated and they moved on. So all of that training, all of that four years of work was gone. 
Okay. Meanwhile, though, the last two years, they they implemented the system. It doesn't take two years to implement the system, but they implemented about two years ago. They then replaced those two people with a brand new college graduate who had no experience, degree, but no experience. And then they also outsourced to a shared service in India. Okay, here's the results. This is what she said. Basically, they were able to hand off to both those people their, all their assigned accounts with no noticeable change. The owner of the firm in India, the shared service, said their documentation was actually impressive and really, really facilitated the onboarding process and made it go a lot smoother. And then lastly, she said that their name actually comes up in their internal staff meetings in India, that this is the firm that we want to emulate because it was so easy to onboard somebody. So think about this, whether you're going to be bringing on staff or you're going to be outsourcing something, you need to have all of that documentation written down somewhere. So even if you're going to go to some fancy, you know, other software that's going to do everything, you need to have it written down simply first. That's the first step. And you can do that using cut, copy, and paste, screen clips, and everything like this in OneNote. If, if, whether this is step one and you migrate to something else, great. Or maybe you use this forever. But either way, though, you need to get it down and written in one spot. And this is simple to do because it's word technology. Okay. So let's actually take a look at it. So in this, we're actually going to go forward by kind of going back in time. Okay, now what do I mean by that? Well, in reality, all OneNote is, is really nothing but a virtual filing cabinet. You see, this right here, the notebook in OneNote is the filing cabinet. These sections in the root directory are kind of like manila folders sitting on top of the filing cabinet. These section groups, okay, these first level section groups are kind of like drawers. So far, so good, just a filing cabinet. Then you open that drawer and then you see a, a bunch of clients here. Those are just like expandable folders in that drawer. So these are just four expandable folders in that drawer in the filing cabinet. And then if you go in and open up the, uh, the, the expandable folder, you have a bunch of manila folders sitting in the red weld, sitting in the drawer, sitting in the filing cabinet. So that's all one note is. It's just a virtual filing cabinet. Okay, and if you think about that, it makes sense. And you're going to be able to understand where everything goes because it's just a filing cabinet. You filed stuff before, okay? Now, what are the different components? First of all, you're going to go in there and you're going to have a section for all of your firm agnostic workflow instructions. So you're going to have a section for bank rec and how to do things and videos on how to do stuff. So you're going to have all your training for all the different things that basically is just firm-wide. It's not client-specific, it's just firm-wide. So you're going to have a whole section for instructions on how to do things your way. Because we come in there, everybody does things slightly different. So document the way your firm does things. And that is your general rules on how you do stuff, okay? And then in each account that you're gonna reconcile, you're gonna have a manila folder for that account. So just think about you have all your bank racks in a manila folder, right? And that section right here called checking is that manila folder. The very top page right up here of the very top page in that manila folder is the instructions on how to get the job done. So these are specific instructions on how to deal with this particular client and anything that's unique or weird about it. Because everybody here in this room knows how to do a bank reconciliation. But you don't know all the nuances of my clients. And I don't know all the nuances of your clients. And a brand new staff member, even if they're experienced, will not know all the nuances of each and every client. But guess what? You, will, you would have mind because you'll come in here and look right here and all that stuff. I have a place to take it out of my head and put it on virtual paper. Okay. Then you're going to have templates. We used to use forms and then we got away from forms. So you're going to be able to go in and create these super customized forms that are specific, uniquely tied to this particular client in this account. Okay. The, all this is is a simple table with hyperlinks. But this is like an unbelievably customized workflow form that will take me to every location I need to go to get this bank rec done. One click, boom, and I'm there. Super customizable things. And not only that, I may have related work papers. So in this case right here, I have to do some bank reconciliations. But before I can do the bank reconciliations, I've got to make certain that I can get copies of all the manual checks that they wrote because I got to go in there because they don't come through the bank. So I had the client take a picture of them using Lissio. You know, it comes into there. I have to move those all over to here and everything like that. So right inside here, I may have related work papers that are kind of a building block to my actual work papers. And then I get down to the work papers. And this right here, for example, is going to be a filled out bank reconciliation. So it's just this grid right here filled out that looks just like this. 
and everything you need to review this is all right there. I can't tell you many times until I started this top until I started this process, I couldn't review. It was very, very difficult to review somebody's work because by the time you ended up reviewing it, it almost you could have done it yourself. Okay. So a lot of times I didn't have time to fully review somebody. So mistakes fell through the cracks because I just could not get through opening up 13, you know, this document and this document, opening up this and putting it and repiecing and kind of putting the puzzle back together each time I wanted to review something. But this format, everything you need to see is in view. Oh, this agrees. Here's this. Here are these issues. Everything's on one page or one click away. Okay. So let's take a look at some more examples of some work papers that you can you can use inside of here. And then I'm going to go through some example work papers. And then I'm actually going to show you this in live motion once inside of OneNote. Okay. But for example, here, um, I, I actually have a month end checklist and I can see the entire month at, at, at a glance in one view, what's been done, what's not been done. And not only that, it's going to give me hyperlinks, everything. So check this out. So up here, I've got hyperlinks to, you know, the reports that I use. And these, these reports will tie actually are generic and will actually go to the QuickBooks report. And if there's some quick notes here that I don't want people to forget about that are really important, I put them right there. Here, I've got my monthly or my annual tasks that happen once a month. So inside here, I have my 1099s. And then what I can do is I can actually link this to my 1099 work papers. I can link this right here in May to my um, Secretary of State work paper. So I'll have a section tab called Secretary of State and then I'll have a page for each, each, each year right there with the work papers and everything right there. And then I'll come in here and say, oh man, I got to do this. Click on the link. Boom, it takes me right where I need to go with instructions on where to go and how to do it. And it's not, and you're not going to visit because it's sitting right there. Okay, down here, this is every step that I want my staff to do. Every single step that they're going to do will be linked right here. But not only that, every one of these things is hyperlinked to where they need to go. So for example, the very first thing I want them to do is make sure that they've cleaned the bank feeds. Now you and I know how to do that, but a brand new person is not gonna know that. So, but guess what? I put it right there, click on this link and it takes you right to the site in QBO. And, and this way, you're going to be able to go through and not miss everything. Now, I, and I'm pretty good, but I don't always remember every step. But this checklist, you know, checklists are for beginners. But you know what? Us ex experienced people sometimes miss things. So having a checklist is not a bad thing, especially when it's right there. And you click and the checklist, not only it, it actually saves you time because to get to a bank feed, how long will it take you to get to the bank feeds in QuickBooks Online? Well, guess what? Here, one click away. It's going to work for zero. It's going to work for pretty much any other online software, not the desktop though. But we're all moving away from the desktop. We're all moving online. Okay. Then you're going to be able to see here everything that's done. And now this is the color coding system that I use, but you can use anything you want. And X just means it's done and there's no work paper. Okay. White means it's been, if there's a, a link right here, that means it's actually been done, but not yet reviewed. If it's green, that means it's been reviewed. Yellow means there's an issue, okay? So very easily you can see what's been done, what hasn't been done, and stuff that, like, for example, if I don't do everything every single month, like, for example, I'm not going to tie out, it, you know, you may not look at inventory every month, maybe you'll get it once a quarter. So then what you do is you just kind of gray out the, the, the months that you're not going to do it. And then just leave the months white on what you want to do. But that is a simple month and checklist. Now, it's not going to warn you, but coming in and seeing an entire year all at glance because you can't always close because sometimes stuff will carry over into the next month where you maybe they get everything accomplished. This right here is a simple way to look at every step that you need to do for the month end. Now I'm going to come up with these are some theory, some brand new work paper um, formats that I've created that I've come up with that you can once you kind of learn the theory of what we're trying to do with it here, you can apply it in many, many different ways. So this type of work paper is one that I call a workflow grid. Okay, what's and, a workflow? Yep. And Rob, these are all, you've got these available for folks to download as a template, right? Like we oh, yeah, put, yeah. put these, we've linked these to the Grove, right? Yes, So they're, yes, they're available, yes. yeah. Yeah, so yeah. all of these templates, you're gonna be able to come in here, start with my template and then tweak it for your firm. You're 90% yep. of the way there. And you can just take it, tweak it, and then like basically copy it and paste it into your OneNote. And then, yeah, perfect. Just want to let people know that because 
the brilliance of this is really, I think, resonating with people. And then they're thinking, hmm, how do I, how do I set it all up? Yep. Yeah. We're going to give you the template so you don't have to, because it took me a while to create them. So, but I don't want you to spend the time. I want you to just take the template. Cop, we're not in college anymore. We're not in school. So we can, it's okay to copy it, copy off each other. So I'm going to let you copy off my homework and take it and then tweak it for your firm and then go from there. So the workflow uh, grid benefits, it's going to speed up and give instructions to prepare and everything is one click away. So here's some tips that are going to carry over month to month. How do you categorize that telephone expense? The telephone expense has got to be 40% to admin, 60% to sales or whatever, okay? But how would you know that unless it's big? But guess what? Right here, anything that the preparer will need to know is going to be right there. And if you learn something, you can just add it there and it'll carry over month to month, okay? You've got hyperlinks to every place that you need to go. Okay, so whether, you know, and I'm going to show you some of the exact hyperlinks, but every place that you need to go to do a bank reconciliation, one click away. It's right there. Okay, everything for review. You've got the summary. You've got the bank statement. You've got the outstanding checks. You've, we've, we've, we copied this as a grid so you can actually type on it, highlight it, and, and make, you know, and add notes next to each item. All this cleared or this hasn't cleared and I talked to the client, everything like this. All that stuff is going to basically be right there. Okay. But not only is the summary there, because you, you maybe you want to see the entire bank statement, you see this hyperlink right here. This is just a snapshot of the summary of the bank statement. If you click on this, that actually takes you to the, the detail buried sitting inside of Lysio where the bank statement is or in your DMS. So when you're in here, just have to prepare right when they're there, copy and paste it. So when the reviewer comes in, you don't have to sit there and browse into 13 different directories to find it. You just click it. It takes two seconds to copy a link and paste it. So if they spend two seconds longer to save you a lot of time, I'll take that all day long. And then you've got notes and comments for the reviewer. So up here, here's some reviewer notes. And down here, this is where I have my staff put anything that's unusual. 90% of a bank statement is the same, but for the 10% the that's weird or different, or maybe they're not quite certain, we'll just take a screen clipping and also put a hyperlink to that transaction because I don't want to have to sit there and find the transaction. Give me a hyperlink. Okay, that's one thing here. If you're telling somebody where to go and you don't give them a hyperlink, you're wasting their time because you've already got the a hyperlink sitting right there. Just paste that hyperlink and go to it. Okay, it's the same thing here. And this is my pet peeve because I'm extremely lazy. I'm the laziest person you'll ever meet. But like when somebody sits there and texts me their phone number, when you do that, I always do you know my phone number with the dashes in between. If you do that with the dashes in between and send the phone number instead of the parentheses and everything like this, it actually turns into a hyperlink and then all they do is click it and then it'll automatically call them, okay? So think about the person who's gonna be using it next and save them time by giving them a link so they don't have to do all the hard work that you've already done, okay? So that's the workflow grid, okay? You can use this in so many different things, so many different things. This theory right here can be used all, the all day long to create completely customized stuff all day long. Then we have something called a running balance grid, okay? So here, you don't need to see entire PDF for the bank balance, okay? It's, it only takes up this much information on what was the loan balance at month end, okay? And I don't want that on 12 different PDFs. So this right here, I'm calling this a running balance grid. And what I'm going to do is go in there, just create a simple grid for each month and do a screen clipping of just what I need and put it right there. So that way I can see all 12 months at once because I may have to be doing, because maybe we didn't adjust everything. You know, maybe we went three months and we didn't adjust everything. Well, right here, I can actually see, boom, 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 everything's adjusted. But guess what? Not only that, I've got all the information I need. There's a hyperlink, there's ID, there's the password, here's how to do it. You know, because here's the thing, even with the, something adjusting the loan balance at the month end, if I took a poll right now, how many people would adjust the original transaction versus how many people make a journal entry? It'd probably be split 50-50. And when you're sitting there doing that and you've got different staff doing it, all of a sudden you got things that are inconsistent. When things are inconsistent, that's the big negative in account. Okay. So right there, we've got the grid where you can basically just take a screen clipping, boom, it's right there. You're, you see it on the see it, you see it on the screen, screen clipping, boom, boom. It's just cutting it out virtually and pasting it right on the thing. And you're gonna have all 12 months on one sheet of paper. And you can just keep pushing it down. You could have 12, you know, two, three years if you want on one sheet of paper. 
okay? And all the instructions that you need to get the job done right there. And hyperlinks to any location that you need to go to. This basically takes me to the bank. And guess what this does? This takes me, in this case right here, I'm doing a journal entry, takes me right there to the actual place in QuickBooks. So everything that I'm doing is right here. You, just, you create it once, and it's a tool that you're going to use over and over and over again to make your life a lot easier, like a lever. Okay, checks, loan balances, sales tax reports. Lots of uses for this. Okay, here's one of the um, ones that I used for checks because I had a client that was really struggling with the manual checks. So what we basically had him do is we had him say, every time you take a manual check, you pull out your phone, you open up Lysia, you take a picture of it. It sits in that getting things done chamber. Whenever you go, you know, whenever you were to go and do some work on the client, you go look there, you say, oh, they've got some new checks. That person, okay, I actually had an admin staff going in there and cleaning up the items out of the getting things done bucket, the info queue, and then just drop the pictures here. So I had an admin staff going in there, opening it up, seeing what's there, dropping, if they see a check, they just drop it right on the grid. So down here, if it's blue, that means the bookkeeper's already entered it. But the admin person went in, took a picture of the check, just put it in the grid and just push this down. So all they did was push the grid down and go 203, 104, 105, 106, whatever. And then just put the pictures right here. So the next time the bookkeeper came here, guess what? They didn't have to look for any of the canceled checks. They were already sitting there. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm trying to push a lot of the menial work to the lowest pass, not the lowest staff, but you, you know what I mean by the most junior level staff. And if I could move a lot, if I can push time from my bookkeepers down to junior staff and admin or reviewers down to book, all of a sudden I'm leveraging everybody's time. So that's what we're able to do here. So I was able to save the bookkeepers who are really the people that I'm, I'm really worried about their time. They were, their time was cut in half because all that paperwork and all that running around and looking for stuff, it was, everything was just laid out like mise en place. Everything was laid out. The chef, you know, it's, it's, it's the sous chef has everything there for you. And then the, the, the main chef comes in and does everything. Okay. That's what we're trying to do. Set everything up. So that way, when the person comes in, they're doing the level of activity that their experience requires or demands. Okay. Once again, add hyperlinks. And everything is screen clipped right there. And that's just a simple table with screen clips. That's all it is. That's all it is. This, need, this was entered to be entered. And you can tell by, by the color. That's simple. Okay. Virtual forms, client meetings. You can go in there and create a form for client meetings. Okay. Hyperlinks, everything like this. An entire section for meetings. So what we do is you can create a virtual form. What's great about OneNote forms is that it expands. It's not like a PDF. It's not a Word file. Like it's real crumbly. And, and very rigid and you can't end stuff, this form will expand to fit the information that you put into it. So any form that you can do, you can replicate that form inside OneNote and, and then be able to copy it and duplicate it and use it all day long. Same thing with perm file. I had a grid right here, a summary, that basically had just the important information, screen clipped right there. So I saw all the important information on one sheet of paper, but it was all hyperlinked to details. Okay, you can do one of two things. You can either have the OneNote, because like right here, think of each OneNote page as kind of like an email, kind of, where you can embed, you can actually embed a document into a OneNote page. So in this case right here, I actually had this PDF embedded into this page with the printout. And then I had it linked from up here down to here. So this was a summary page, like right here at the top. And then this link right here linked me to here, right, the PDF and the printout. So everything was right there. No documents, just information. Because that's one thing that we're basically doing here, okay, is we're managing information. We're not managing documents. And once you basically realize that documents are an empty box that you throw away, I actually have a couple empty boxes because I'm moving. And I'm getting rid of all my boxes. It's the stuff in the box that you care about. You don't care about the box. You care about the stuff in the box. So I don't care about the PDF. I care what's in the PDF, okay? I don't care about the email. I care what's in the email. If you start to manage information and stop ignoring, and then just think of documents as a, as a vessel, then everything, then you see it, then you can get there, okay? The other option would be, you can do the same thing here, but if you don't want them inside OneNote, you can hyperlink to the file sitting in your DMS, okay? Whether it's SharePoint, ShareFile, whatever. Okay, so now that I've kind of showed you a bunch of stuff, let's actually go in there and take a look. So this right here is OneNote. I've got all my different notebooks right here. 
I've got my bookkeeping notebook right here. And I've got an inbox kind of like for stuff that I don't quite know where it goes. I can put it into here. I have all of my most recent templates here. Now, I don't have everything here because this is just uh, an example. But that's one thing that you're going to want to do because as you start to roll this process out, you're going to start with templates. You're going to copy all the templates and put them um, into your system. And then you're going to tweak them. And then you're going to use it. And then you're going to tweak it a little bit more. And then you're going to use it and tweak it a little bit more. So what you want to do is make sure you have the most recent version of your work paper copied into your template. So you're not looking for where it's at. Okay. This section right here, I've got the zero section. This is where you're going to be able to go in and put all of your different firm-wide work papers that you want to train people. So for example, down here, um, I had a naming convention. I want to make sure that my staff names everything the same, because if you don't have similar naming conventions, things can get, you can duplicate stuff and everything like that. So I had this form right here. Now, a lot of the stuff, some of the, a lot of the stuff that I'm showing, like for example, this right here, um, you know, if you kind of think this is a good idea, this is in the growth. You can go there, download, copy this from the growth, paste the whole thing over there, get nine, get on the, get it into the red zone. You're already on the, you know, the 10 yard line and just tweak it. See, so you, because you're not, you're not going to agree with everything that I do and that's okay. But your firm needs to agree within your firm. That's the key. Take this, tweak it for your firm, and then be consistent within your firm. And then I've got different stuff in here. So for example, I went out, I found a really good article online um, and I copied that and I put that in here. Um, I've got some stuff, other articles, anything about how to do stuff, my staff can come right here and learn how to do stuff. It's all right here. Okay, yeah. so have, oh, yeah, yes, Allison? Sorry, Rob, we've got um, one or two people asking to make the um, zooming out a bit on the screen because the the um, just making the screen, the text, there we go, just text a little bit bigger. Okay. So that yeah. people can read it. Okay. Yeah. 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 And and once again, yeah. And and um, I'll, yeah, I'll try to do that. But on some of this stuff, if you can't necessarily see it, um, just the, the, once again, it's the idea of what we're trying to accomplish here. Okay. And what's the, and one thing that's kind of cool in, in OneNote, you can actually embed a YouTube video into a page and watch the video right here. So you've got the video. They don't even have to leave the page. It's embedded right inside here. Okay. So there's a lot of things you can do by having all of your firm work papers right there. Okay. Now let's get into the actual client. So in this case, right here, I go into the A to L drawer by clicking right here. And now I'm in the bookkeeping filing cabinet in the A to L drawer. And here's the Acme Redwell. So I'll just go into the Acme Redwell. Okay. Now, one thing that I can do, if I'm like way over here, for example, um, let's just go way over to here. And I want to get to Acme. The fastest way to do it is just come over here to the search bar right over here in the right-hand corner. Type in the words Acme and click right there. So I'm never more than one click, you know, like half, you know, maybe a second or two getting to these work papers. So if my client calls, I can be looking at their work papers just like that. Okay. And everything I need is right here. Once again, I'm going to have a client that's got an inbox. Okay. There's my monthly status grid. If I click on bank feeds right here, it takes me right to the bank feeds inside QuickBooks Online. Boom, that quick. It just took me right there. I can come through once I've done it, I can put an X. If I want to go to this one right here, it takes me right here. It's saving so much more time. And then all I did to basically create this to get to the deposit right here, because this is how I kind of review on deposit funds. I make sure nothing's kind of sitting here. All you got to do is copy the URL, come up to the URL, control C copy, come right back down to the grid here. Okay, and if this wasn't, I'll, I'll just remove this link real quick. All I have to do is highlight the word, right click, go to link, and paste the link in. So that, in that little amount of time, I'm able to save every preparer from, and reviewer from now on how many clicks. That is a lot of future click savings by taking copy, Right click, paste, edit. So four mini steps will save thousands of clicks going forward. That's what you want to do. You want to do this for future you and for future preparers. Okay. But everything I need is essentially right here. 
Okay. Another thing that um, that I also implemented is I created a kind of a client dashboard with just random pieces of information with hyperlinks and stuff like that. Um, that's something also, you know, and this is kind of one place where you can kind of come to kind of just see some random information. Don't duplicate, copy and paste and make this be unique information and link to where the source information is, okay? But let's take a look at the bank reconciliations. So over here, I've got an account called checking. Up here at the top, I've got all my instructions. Right here, normally this would be right here. I just had this moved over for um, taking a screenshot, but right here, I've got this right here. So all I have to do is to start a new month is I just come in, I copy that table. I come in, I add a new page. I paste this in right there. So all I did was make a copy of the form. I went and put it in the Xerox machine, hit copy, and now I've got a copy of the form. Okay, but it's faster because it was right here. Now, of course, I'm not getting my steps in walking over the copy machine, but that's that's another story. Okay. And then all I got to do is come down here and put in the month. But now, right here, okay, the first thing I need to do is I want to basically go in and I need to go to the login. Okay, I got to log in and get the bank statement. Well, right here, you see logins. That takes me right to where all my logins are stored right here in Lysio. So then I can go in, find the password and the ID in case it's been changed. I can then click on, no, I would normally have the bank right there. I do not, but so this time I've got to go and go to the bank. So let's go in here and go to um, chase.com. This is what you normally do. You got to find it. You got to get to it. You've got to, now where is it? Business right here. So now there's the sign in. So right there, so click. So all I'm gonna do is copy this right there, come back over to here, come right in the bank, right click, link, paste it. But what I'm gonna to wanna to make sure I do is I'm gonna to wanna to make sure I change the template, okay? Cause I changed that month, but if I don't change the template, then it's not gonna change it for each and every month going forward. But now that I've got there, there. So now I've saved, I've even made this better because now I've got the hyperlink there. So I can come back over to here, click the bank. It's gonna take me right where I need to go. I can sign in, put in the information, grab it, everything like this. Maybe the client sent it to me. This one right here will take me to the information queue sitting right here in Lysio where, oh, they've already uploaded the bank statement. So in this case right here, what I can basically do is come in. There's the information right there. Now to fill this out, it's doing a screen clipping. So all I do is come into here, go into this box. Okay, I can go to insert screen clipping here. But what I did was, if you don't know about this, learn about quick access tool, quick access toolbar, okay, which is right down here. So all my favorites are right down here. I stay on the home button and I go right down here and I've got my screen clipping right here. Okay, and if you don't know about quick access toolbar, I've got that inside the group on how to do this. It's in my OneNote training, but it works for Excel, works for all, all the Microsoft products. You've got this quick access toolbar. So I've got this right here. So you can just click on screen clipping and then it kind of highlights that. And I just come in here and all I want is this right here, just that information right there. And then it drops it right into that grid. Now, what I want to do is I want to make sure I can come back to this because maybe the reviewer wants to come back and actually see the bank statement. Well, I can copy the link, come right back over to here and just paste the link right there. So now I have a copy of the summary with a link back to the original site. So if I come back over to here, close this. Okay. I'm nowhere near it. But if I want to go back and see this, because it took two, it, it didn't even take two seconds to copy the link and paste it. And if you can train your preparers to do that, think of how much time it's going to save not only you, but it's going to save them too, because chances are they're going to have to go back to it too. Okay. Always be thinking that you're, tra you're, you're, tr you're blazing a trail. And when you're clearing the path, you, you can be one of two ways. You can walk through the path, you know, when you're hiking. Like you kind of push something out of your way and you can keep it so it doesn't snap the next person that's right behind you. If you release it, it'll just snap them in the back. But if you kind of move it out of the way and keep it out of the way, they've got a clear path now. So be considerate. Think of the person following you, okay? And give them a high one click way. So now right here, boom, they click this. Took them, it took them just this much effort and it saved you this much.
It could also be future you too. Like you could actually yeah. be saving yourself. Cause I know there's a lot of people on this, on this, um, this, uh, webinar right now with you, Rob, that are solos. Yeah. And so and, and, you're and, saving yourself a ton of time too. No, right? And that's exactly right. And, yeah. and, and, you know, and if you're, and if you are solos, then yes, future you is a new person who is older and more tired. happier, happier. No, but they're also happier because well, they're you're going gonna to be. be yeah. yeah they're, no, they're yeah. going to be if if you've yeah. implemented this. They're more relaxed. Yes. Yeah. If you've implemented this, life is going to be great. Well, you started okay. to go down the older and more tired route, and I thought, no, 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 I'm going to stop them right there. Future <laughs> you is more relaxed and happier, has time to spend with the family, yes. and can go yes. golfing and whatever. You yes. know, bake, bake cakes and yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Allison is half, a glass half full kind of person. I'm a glass half kind of. Yeah, empty. we balance each other yes, out. Yin and yang, yin and yang. But that's the key here, though. You've got all this stuff set up, okay. And even if you are by yourself, okay, because a lot of times you're by yourself because it's really hard to train somebody. This is a way you're going to be able to possibly delegate to somebody and have them do it just the way you do it. Because if you can take what's in your head and put it on work papers, they're going to do it the way you do it, and then you can delegate. And then you're certain that it's as good as the job as you do it, okay? So that's where we're going with this. So you've got the sitting right here. We're going to be able to come in here. You're going to be able to sit there and click on this reconcile right here. So for example, down here, if you, if you looked right here, account ID equals 35. Every account in QuickBooks Online has a unique, now this is the first time we're in here because this is a sample company. So normally it would come right to here. But if you look right here, you can see account ID equals 35. Now I can't make this any bigger, but this right here says account ID equals 35. Okay. If I come in here and change this to savings, it's now account ID equals 36. So if I come in here, copy this, come over to here, come back over to, to my month end checklist right here. Ooh, reconcile checking. Well, I need to act. I, I got to reconcile the savings. Well, guess what I can do? I can just, I can come right here and, and I'm going to insert above just like that. And I'm going to say reconcile savings, just like that. And I'm going to highlight, and I'm going to double click this right there. Right click, link, control V paste. And this says account ID equals 36. I click OK. I've now completely changed my entire workflow. So I don't miss that step, that simple. This process is that customizable. You can change it on the fly and make it super targeted, super unique for the specific client. So now when I come in here, if I click this, it takes me to here and then I click this, takes me to the reconciliation, 35. If I come over to here, I don't need an entire work paper for bankrupts for savings because it's just a little bit of interest. Okay, you don't really need a whole page on that. If you do, great, but if you don't, that's okay too. But right here, I can just click this right here and boom, it takes me right to not only the reconcile, but it takes me to the right account. I don't even have to change the account. It takes me right to savings. That saves you a lot of steps. That is going, I mean, think of how many, it's going to, it's going to, because I thought it could have, I could have sworn by now I would have had carpal tunnel, but I don't. Because the number of clicks I have saved myself by having a one shot boom taking you right there. I rarely use File Explorer. I rarely use favorites. It's one click away. Yeah, Rob, we've got a couple of questions. Is it okay for me to absolutely, chime in? Absolutely. And, okay. Yep, absolutely. Um, so Stephanie has a good one. Will we will we be able to find the, these examples in the Grove? This is a game changer. So I think so, right? The training is all in there. Um, yes. Okay. So, okay. So yeah. Yes. I will come to that. If, I will come to that pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. So I think what we'll do, what we'll do, I'll work, Stephanie, I'll work with Rob on making sure that the email that we send out tomorrow has the right links in it for, if you want to see this, go here. If you want to go, yes, go here, whatever. Um, and then Judy has a question about, um, this is for desktop or online QuickBooks or both. And well, I, I, I think that desktop doesn't have a, a link, does it? Because it's not yeah, posted, can't, okay. right? You can't, okay. If you're using desktop, you can't yeah. hyperlink to the stuff on desktop, but everything else will, can work. Everything, everything else everything else will work. Yeah, but you, you would probably, 
you could hyper hyperlink to where you had the the desktop file saved in your system, like where you were, right? Yeah. yeah. But Judy, the, everything else works, like the screen clipping and the, Just, uh, the all the because you you're, sins, everything the reports. Yeah. Like you yeah. can't click the report, but you're going to say, "Here's the report you're going to use." Yeah, okay. and then if you're using Lysio, of course, um, you probably already know this, that um, anything you could print to PDF, including from any desktop software, because of course it prints to PDF, you can send to your client, you know, with just a click or two through Lysio. So you could put all your documents in. I think Rob is going to show that. And then um, William was asking, what is the Grove? Came in a couple of minutes mm -hmm. late. Yep. So... Yeah, the, yep, we'll explain. Get... We will. We'll explain yep. all of that. So yep. just 15, 15 minutes. Just want to do a time check. So we have yep. the questions yep. answered. This is great, guys. Keep them coming. Okay. So, okay. So, so basically one thing that I want to think about right here. Okay. When you go to implement this, if, okay, if you're by yourself, great. If you have staff, then here's what you need to do. Okay. There's a great book called The Synergist. Same guy who wrote Predictable Success. Okay. He basically said there's four types of people, visionary, operator, Synergist and processor. So let's ignore synergist and, 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 and visionary for right now. Just focus on operator and processor. Okay. So if you think about it, what are the top skills and traits of a good bookkeeper? Accurate, thorough, consistent, systematic, like routine and linear thinking. Okay. That. And what is a good skill for a consultant? Likes variation, lateral thinking, problem solver, life linear, thinks lazy. Okay. So a good bookkeeper, an operator, a good bookkeeper you're going to want as an operator. They want to just go in and get the job done. They don't care how it's done. They just want to get the job done. Okay. A processor thinks about the process. So when you're sitting there and delegating to your staff to get them to do this, if you have staff, okay, you're going to want to go in and you're going to want to make sure you've got the right person for the right job. So you're going to want to take your processors and have them create these work papers. You're going to your operators to follow along after they've already been built. Do not expect all your staffs to be processors. Okay. I that the 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 previous firm that the case study, she tried that. It didn't work. So finally she said, Hey, this person knows how to do it. They let that person go in there and blaze the trail. And then everybody else just uses the things that were already built. So build it and then they will come. Okay. You're going to start with one client that the processor knows. So find a processor in your firm or if it's you. Okay, you are the both processor and operator. Okay, you so if for for the people who work by themselves, you're both of these. You're a processor and an operator, or you wouldn't be around. Okay, but if you have a firm, find your split up your processors and operators. You know who they are. Start with one client, do it completely. Okay, then go in and do another one because you're going to tweak the work papers. Make sure you're saving the templates. And then after you've done that, if you have staff, then what you're going to do is sw switch and delegate. Okay, so the processor is going to take one of the clients that they've set up and they're going to push it to an operator, say follow along. And then they're going to be able to get through 80% of it and they're going to find out 20% they need help on. Do not tell them face to face because that's dust in the wind. Documenting the workflows. So pretty soon, now you've proven that this person can go on vacation and the job will get done because you've actually tested it out. And now you've freed up the processor to go and take one of their clients and systemize it. And then they they create the work papers and then push it back to the person. You just keep doing that. Just get rid of one, take one, convert it, pass it back. And you're just doing that back and forth. And just let the processor go through and clean it up. That way it'll be consistent and you're not forcing somebody to do what they don't like to do. Okay. So once again, the theory of what we're kind of doing here, and then we'll come back and talk about the growth. There's three books that Joe Woodard basically um, has had me re read that have really made a difference in what we're trying to do here. Okay, one, getting things done. You need all your information to get the job done, whether it's documents or communications or tasks, all that stuff in one place. So find your getting things done bucket and make sure you use it, whether it's coming from the client or whether it's internal. You need one place to store all the, all the ingredients. So it's laid out and ready to rock and roll. Okay, you can use Lysio or another other program. Two, processes are the key. Take the process and put it down on paper, okay? It's easier to put it into OneNote than it is some big fancy software that you have to sit there and learn the software and how to do this stuff. Just write it down in OneNote. That way you can use this forever. Or if you ever move on, it's already written down. All the steps are already there and somebody can basically come in and just step, okay? Because remember, 
think of how many people this firm in India has seen. How many, think of, how many people she's onboarded? And they're using this as the example, as the easiest onboarding they've had. If that doesn't basically say the system works, then I don't know what does. Okay, now this wasn't me. This was her. She's the one who did this. I just showed her what to do and she did it. Okay. And then lastly, you got to make sure you have the right person for the right job. Okay. So let's actually talk about the Grove. Okay. So right now, if you go to thegrove.thinkific.com, you can basically come in here and then what you'll do is you'll see some classes. So if we actually come in there and let me actually bring it up. So if you come in to the Grove right here and go to thegrove.thinkific.com, you're going to come into here. Nice welcome from Allison right here. And then you're going to see some different courses right here. And then all you have to do is click on a course. Okay. And then you'll click enroll for free. And then and you'll that's ask not the entire list of courses, by the way. This homepage is just a little smattering of things that we want to entice you with. <laughs> yes. And you click on more courses. And then yeah. basically right here. And I we're am... releasing about three new courses a week. So you're going to want to come in at least once a week and check things over. Yeah. yeah and see what's new. And. That's exactly right. And then one of the things with this course right here, you're going to come in there and you'll see 365 bookkeeping. Okay, that'll be the name of the course. Okay, um, OneNote 365 bookkeeping. And with that one right there, um, I've, I've got kind of the, the, the stuff laid out. You're going to be able to go in there and watch step-by-step -step videos on how, I, how you're going to be able to take the templates, copy them down to your system, tweak them, implement them, roll them out, the benefits and everything like this. So you can really go through there and really just take what I've done, drop it down to your system, tweak it for your firm because we all do it differently, which is great. We can all be inconsistent amongst each other, but within your firm, you have to be consistent because you can't scale and delegate well unless you have consistency within your firm. And this is gonna allow you to do that. And then you're gonna be able to go through there. And then with the Grove, we've really got two sections here. One, we have courses, which are step-by-step -step videos where you can come in, watch them and do some stuff like this. We're also going to have sections called tips and tricks. We're going to have like bookkeeping tips and tricks where you can come in and I'm going to, we're going to be releasing that. And, and inside the bookkeeping tips and tricks, you're going to see some of my month end checklists, my year end checklists, that nanny convention, just a, a lot of memos and handouts that I gave to my clients, go in there, copy them, um, take them, tweak them and make them your own. Okay. And then we also have a section up underneath here under community and up underneath here, you can come into here, click on the different areas and ask questions. And basically what we're going to do is this is where if you've got a question, come in here, ask a question, people will respond back and forth. This will be back and forth. But then what we're going to be doing is like, for example, down here, um, Donna came in and she's like, hey, I heard about this barter transaction somewhere. Where was that? So then what all I did was I just came in, responded back to her and they said, hey, here's where it's at. Just this is it's in a it's in a tip. It's in the bookkeeping tips course. Just click this right there. And it took her right here to where the, the template was right there. And yeah, and this right here is the bookkeeping tips and tricks where you can kind of come in and see, like, for example, here I've got, you know, un under my uh, handout, right or like right here, I've got, you know, all the QBO links right here where you can just copy this and put this right into your browser. This right here teaches you how to do that. Um, here's my month end checklist. Here's how I used to clean up my chart of accounts and why it was so important to do that. Here's my naming conventions where you can click on this, copy this, and then, um, you know, make it your own because you may not agree with everything. But this right here is the Grove. It's going to have a huge amount of information. We're just getting started on the courses that are going to be in here. Um, our goal is you can come here and everything you would ever need to learn as an accountant will be here somewhere in the Grove. Yeah, and you can suggest courses for us as well. Um, now, the couple of couple questions about the Grove came in while you were chatting there, um, while you were showing it, Rob. Um, Samantha was asking about Canadian content. And yes, we have a plan to roll out Canadian content, but what we need to find out is um, what are the key differences and then we'll find experts to fill those gaps and specific, we'll have like a specific Canadian corner. So more to come on that. Mm -hmm. um, we want to encourage everybody to submit their best tips as well, because Absolutely. this is an interactive process. And um, while we have access to all sorts of experts like Rob and Alicia Katz Pollock and Katie Maddox and Ron Baker and all sorts of amazing people that's going to continue to roll out. Um, we really feel that no one knows everything, but collectively we all know everything. Does that make sense? 
And so ask and answer on the community right now, we have about a thousand members and um, we're growing at about 50 to 100 members a day. So growing rapidly. Um, and please would everyone go in and, um, and, uh, and help us, you know, help us increase the engagement and make this really a place where people want to go, you know, a couple times a week or even daily. Um, so we've got about five minutes left, Rob. Um, so want to share that link again. It's the grove.thinkific.com. And I'll just put that, if we could just put that in the chat, uh, I'll, do, I'll just do it right now. The grove.thinkific.com. Um, everybody go ahead and join. Uh, make sure your staff join too. And um, it's free. And we hope that you enjoy it and let us know. So any last, oh, and where do we find the template? Yeah, so, you, yeah you'll find the templates if you go, if you, what we're going to do is on the email, we'll have a link to the exact course. And inside the course, when you follow the course, there'll be links to the templates. Essentially yeah. what they, essentially what they are is you will, you will get a hyperlink to an online version right here that basically this is going to be an online OneNote account and you're going to be able to come in here and so you're not sharing, Rob. You're you're oh, my bad. <laughs> you're going here, here, and we're like looking at your okay. face. That's okay. great. So but... essentially, what essentially what you're going to get is you're going to get a link to this OneNote notebook that is online, where mm -hmm. you're going to be able to come in here and you're going to be able to see all of the forms, like all of these forms right here. Mm -hmm. You're going to be able to sit there and copy them. You copy and paste. Yeah. So they're invited in just as a sort of a viewer, right? And then they can just yes. copy and paste them, right? You can't edit them. No, you're going to be able to come in and all you do is hit control A a couple of times and to copy everything and then paste it in yours. And then, and then probably I've you'll have to, you'll have just one thing, one little watch out when you do that, everybody, um, you'll have to widen the columns and reset them. So don't be kind of weirded out if it doesn't look exactly, you just move the columns around. Um, mm -hmm. But you all know how to do that. Um, mm -hmm. You all know how to work with tables. And and the key here is I'm going to be constantly adding this. Remember back in the day where you used to get the, the papers in the mail from the um the text, the tax law people, and you had to, I, you know. I the, do remember the, that. And you had to take out, had and they, told, they told you how to take out section whatever and replace yes, it. Yes, and put pages. them in. And so basically oh I'm going to be constantly, and I'm going to be constantly adding work papers to this, whether it's my idea or somebody else's, somebody else's a good one, share it with us. We'll put it in here. We will give you credit um, and make it, and together we can, Together, we can move mountains. Okay, so let's work together. Let's share amongst each other and let's change the world. I love the idea of changing the world. All right, everybody, I think we are we are done. Um, Rob, I just want to share with you that everyone was, we had a few people with mind blown emojis and um, Carol was asking, she was really looking for um, OneNote training that brought Lysio and OneNote together. So that was really great. Um, you've got some people, Darcy, thank you, bravo, <laughs> that's great. Um, and well, Helo Heloise said earlier that you did say mise en place, correct. Okay, well, <laughs> thank you, because normally, yeah, normally I screw that up, but, but, but seriously, guys, I guarantee it, if you implement this, the next time you see me, you will come up and thank me, because it just, I, I it's happened to me. He's times. thrown down the gauntlet, so just, everybody. So just do it, just do it, and your life will change, yeah. or your yeah. double, or double your money back. Yeah. And if anyone wants to learn about Lysio, it's super simple. It's lysio.me, not .com, lysio.me, and you can schedule a demo. We encourage you to do that. Um, the two together really does really do work extremely well because your clients will be very, very effective um, using Lysio because it's so easy and it's mobile. And so when you get the documents quickly, Rob has now bridged, well, what do you do with those documents? Well, you don't manage documents, you manage knowledge, you manage information. All right, everybody, we're going to end now, but do join us on The Grove and you will see our growing list of live events and you will also see our growing list of um, live courses, not live courses, self-paced courses. And um, we're just very glad you could join us today. So thanks, everybody. Thanks, Rob. Bye.